Welcome to Wine and Dine. I'm Brad Meyer, restaurant critic for Houston Community Newspapers. And I'm Mark Hader. By the way, uh, Brad, today's episode of Wine and Dine is brought to you by Ronco's new Velcro top button extender. Brad, if you got one of those tight nuts, you just stick this one in. The, right now, they're looking at the picture of it. Yeah, right. I, I need one for my my belt. <laughs> that's what I need. That's that's what I. Because we're the uh, the over the hill gang. No, no, no. No, no, no. Hole the hole the in the wall. The hole in the wall gang. We went to the hole. It's it's Canada's hole in the wall. Only it's Real. not in Canada. Yeah. No, it's not in what Canada. What is that, James Canada? What's it, it? it is James. James Canada. I think so. Yes, I believe okay. it is James Canada. It's it's where Dixie's uh, uh, Bayou Victuals used to be. One of those things. It's right across from Church's Chicken on Fraser Street in Conroe. Uh, I think North And for those of you watching from Illinois... Anyway. Pay, pay no attention. Pay no attention. Well, James Canada decided he wanted to open up a restaurant. So he opened up the Conroe uh, Lunchbox Cafe. But it was in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it was so a bad he, he moved it to this new location right on Fraser. A lot of drive by traffic. He expanded the hours, he expanded the menu. And what'd you think? Uh, it's like to me, uh, I'm traveling, I think back when I was traveling to Oklahoma on Route 66, and you get the uh, yearning for something good to eat, and you pull into this old greasy spoon or something. They got burgers, the best, they got everything, whatever you want, meatloaf. That is what this place it, is to it, me. It is comfort food. Now, let, let's pull, let's talk about this restaurant, though. They've got a hand-painted sign out front. It, it's not kitschy, it's not cute, it's not clever. It it looks, you know, like a seven-year-old might have painted this this sign out there. And, you know, the restaurant itself, war zones have better looking restaurants than this place. I tend to uh, differ with you there, Brad. Interior, I liked it. It was bright. It had red and the tables were nice. It had two separate places to it, eat. It's got OSB board on the walls. You know, <laughs> typically, you know, they would, would cover that up. It's not fancy on the inside. Would you grant me that much? I will, it's not fancy, but it's got this look, this retro look. It's got two retro. big rooms. One room Cheap. has the old... Uh, Vinyl chairs, like in the, you know, you used to have at your kitchen table and all. I, I, I was pleased with the but, interior. But there's Let me reason. tell you this. Yeah. It was so much better than the lunchbox place. I thought where they had the steam table out front and all. This. Was, I don't uh, know. They still got the steam table. They brought the same well, steam table over. Well, but it's over. behind the counter. The other one was in the middle of the restaurant, not the middle, but in the restaurant. Itself. I don't but know. But what about the food, Brad? Yeah, let's talk about the food. Well, I had the chicken fried steak, and it came with smashed potatoes and corn and I ordered a big uh, side order of, of onion rings. Onion rings, great. Freshly prepared, a, a voluminous amount, plenty of a, a portion size. Really good, like that. Chicken fried steak, pretty salty. It was a little salty there, Brian. Yeah, I, I gave you a little bit of that. It was, right. Yeah, they, they poured the salt on a little thick. And the thing that got me was the crust kept coming off. It, it was like a loose glove. It would just kind of flow off to the side. You have to tuck the meat back into it. Corn, straight out of a number 10 institutional can. Okay, number 10. By the way, that's part of, I think, the glamour of a chicken fried steak when the crust comes off and you got a bunch of brown, uh, white gravy there that you sop it up. It's horrible for you, but it's delicious. Uh, but let me say this, and one more thing before we leave it. Brad, one of the best things you've done in a long time, maybe two years, was order the onion rings. They were, <laughs> they were really they were good. Great onion they, rings. they were really good. The, the mashed potatoes had the skins in them. I'm really not fond of the skins, but, but that's a preference. Some people like it. I don't. You know, Kay, my lovely wife, isn't, uh, doesn't like the skins in her potatoes either. I, I like it. It shows that they're uh, mashed. They're not out of a, an envelope or something. And by the way, I had the uh, the daily special I think was meatloaf it was meatloaf and some other things but I chose the meatloaf special very good I thought smash potatoes oh. what about the quantity of potatoes we got they gave you plenty a lot of potatoes. They, they gave you plenty you know the meatloaf it, it wasn't great but it wasn't bad I, I didn't mind it at all I, I didn't like the they just poured like half a bottle of ketchup on top of it well it, it had ketchup but it was a good flavored ketchup and let me say this, the green beans were actually not canned green beans. They were fresh green beans, a little overcooked, but delicious. The hole-in-the-wall restaurant is a hole-in-the-wall. It's not fancy, it's not elegant, it's not sophisticated. It's got comfort food on the inside, uh, lots of calories, lots of cholesterol, <laughs> lots, of, lots calories. of grease. But delicious. it is down-home cooking, and if that's what you're looking for, head to Canada's Hole-in-the-Wall Grill.
You might like it. Nice people, too, by the way. We had good there service. There you go. I'm Brad Meyer, restaurant critic for Houston Community Newspapers. Uh, Mark Hader, columnist for The Courier and The Villager. And ladies and gentlemen, next time, <laughs> you just wait and see where we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll see <laughs> you next time. Bon appetit. Yeah, right. Take me home.